Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Season 1, Episode 3 of The Imperfects. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we learned an interesting thing about the whole situation with Hannah and... Um, Isabel. It seems like, well, Isabel is killing the scientists that are associated with all of this. She ends up killing at least two of the three. Uh, we don't know if there's anyone besides, um, God, uh, what's, uh, Sydney. Uh, we don't know if there's anyone else outside of all of that, too. The fact is that Isabel didn't immediately go after Sydney, too, I think it's kind of interesting. Because she was in Sydney's house at one point in time, but Sydney wasn't there, so. But part of me wonders, like, her, Sydney and him never met. You would thought she would have probably tried to meet up with him. Wasn't that kind of the whole point? But she didn't meet up with him in the episode, so part of me wonders, could Isabel, not Isabel, but, uh, could, um, Sydney have transformed at some point in time and maybe shifted over to her other self, and that led to her not being there. Because I was like, you would have thought they would have. I thought the cause maybe, maybe I, I misremembering. I thought they were going to meet up, but because he was like, hey, call me back when you get this. Because she found he found out that it's not in the nucleus. What was it like? In it's it's a protein. Uh, a protein glitch is what that uh, doctor, was it Yates, that she was super reluctant to go to because they have some past history or something like that. And even Isabel kind of leans into it like, oh, it's like, she's like, there you go with that condescending like way you talk to people, especially when it comes to the ladies. And I'm like, I wonder what that history is. Was he always kind of like maybe more of a piece of shit to the ladies or something like that? Like, because even Sydney's like, oh yeah, our history or something. I'm like, what's that about? She's just kind of like, I love the whole like, she's like, okay, I'm gonna call him. No, and then she hangs up and kept, and he was like, was that you that called and hung up? And she was like, no. <laughs> but uh, circling back to it, uh, the first scientist, because I was, at first I thought like, oh, is that her power or something? Because she ended up killing that first guy like, with like gas in his car. And I thought, okay, so maybe that's her power. I was even, at first I thought it was going to be Hannah, but it's like, it ended up being Isabel. So I'm like, okay, is that her power? But the way she used chemicals to kill that other guy, the second guy, Yates, I'm like, okay, so maybe she doesn't have any powers But I assume she does, but maybe she doesn't have full control of them or, 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 or something. Because I was thinking, like like I said, I thought Hannah had abilities or something, too, because she says, like, oh, I can eat. But maybe that was like, oh, let's, like, eat as in a, a good serving of revenge is what's co getting cooked up. Because Hannah's under the impression that, like, Isabel is just like, oh, she put acid on a guy's car. It's like, no, she straight up murdered him. Uh, the, Reggie was the guy's name because uh, Yates and uh, Sydney were talking about it later because um, they think like oh like he spilled chemicals in his uh, car and uh, died that way but it's like no Isabel killed him and Hannah doesn't realize that because Hannah I think just kind of buried a lot of that um, Sarkov stuff but it wasn't until Isabel showed up and made her go like no like I can I can do more I can beat more like I can you know she kind of just accepted life as it was, but Isabel kind of gave her purpose. It's like, right, I'm helping you, but these people deserve more. So Hannah isn't too far off from wanting these people dead. She would want, I think Isabel is legitimately trying to keep her from a distance like that. Hey, you can help me. I'll be the one to carry the burden of killing these people. You shouldn't have to be the one. You should be able to just live your life. You've already been through so much that I don't want you to be so tortured about all of this. Like, taking a life isn't an easy thing. And maybe because she, she's done it, probably, like, these aren't the first two victims she's ever done that for. towards. Who knows? Like, maybe there were, like... Because it, it's, I doubt it's just the three scientists. Like, not unless these are, like, the last ones, but maybe she's killed others in the past. I mean, maybe not even just scientists, but maybe because of her circumstances. Um, maybe she has an uncontrollable power, like, um, I mean, any of them. Not just, but it's just, like, the reason I go back to Juan, because his is the one that kind of leads to him killing things or people. So, but the fact that she's showing this compassion to Hannah, because I think she sees so much of herself in Hannah, and maybe Hannah sees a lot of herself in Isabel, and wants to be like Isabel, she wants to feel strong and powerful like Isabel, so, it's going to be interesting to see what that dynamic continues to look like going forward. I did like that everyone got gifts from Sydney to some extent, it's like, okay, um, and I love how each gift kind of got a little increasingly worse, it's like, okay, there's a non scented uh, thing for Abby, so she can just stop spraying like the air freshener or whatever it is, because it's like, yeah, you're basically 
choking people out with that. So it's like, right, this is a non scented thing. So cool. Uh, Juan got a watch because they needed to basically check his vitals and like blood pressure and all that because like determining what are the contributing factors they need to look out for that would eventually lead to him transforming. And uh, Tilda got earplugs. It's like, cool. And I love because it was so last minute. It's like, um, yeah, here you go. Perfect. It's like, cool, cool, cool. Which Juan luckily didn't kill his girlfriend. It's Darcy. I kept calling her Daisy last episode. I might even called her Daisy in the first episode, but it's Darcy. And so, she uh, is super into, like, Juan being, and she calls uh, the Tupacaba Chupi. He's like, don't name it. Don't name it. Don't. And then she's just, and then she ends up like, she's like, it's okay. If this is your decision, because it's like, oh, this is a beautiful beast. It should be able to exist. And he's like, it needs to be destroyed. She's like, well, if that's your decision, I support it. And she stabbed him with a pencil. I'm like, what the Fuck! That's super fuck. She's like, oh, I just want to see it one more time. He's like, what? She's like, yeah, I just want to get the modeling right. And then you see, like, she started a painting, and it's her in Chupi's arms. I'm like, how is he supposed to feel about that? And it's just like, I mean, there's the beauty of, like, hey, she's accepting that side of yourself, but later on he admits, like, she's kind of got, like, a beast fetish. As she always kind of has, ever since, like, her dad would make her. I was like, because I immediately saw that picture. I thought immediately thought of Beauty and the Beast. Um... I mean, because it's an interesting parallel, uh, because obviously that's the very classic Beauty and the Beast story, but, you know, well, I think, I don't know, how, cause once again, like, a lot of the Disney stories are, like, not as dark as their original tales, so I don't know, like, what the original Beauty and the Beast is in comparison to, because all I know is the, uh, blah, 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 blah. the, uh, God, what am I thinking? Oh, the, um, Disney version of Beauty and the Beast, so, you know, I don't know what, like, the original like, story is, and I also know, like, the CW show, like, the more science fictional take on Beauty and the Beast and stuff like that, which, you know, once again, had that very, like, heavy romance angle to it as well, and so she's romanticizing this whole circumstance, so that's gotta make Juan feel all types of complicated, but Abby ended up getting in touch with some of the people, uh, there's at least one, I, I guess she was basing that maybe on, well, I'm sure, like, a lot of that I wonder how much, because she, there were some people that's like someone was a mermaid, someone had x-ray vision, another person had thermal vision, another person had superhuman strength. So we saw like a list of people and their powers and stuff. And I don't know um, if those were any of that were in their files, because there was at least three people on their list who refused to talk to them, so... Because they probably just wanted to put the Sarkov stuff behind him. But the Maxwell guy immediately answered. And he's like, yeah, you should come. It's like, oh. At like first, I was like, oh, he wanted Abby to come along. But then he's like, oh, no, Juan. And Tilda, yeah, bring him along, too. Turns out they're planning on capturing because he's part of a team. Um, I was like, oh, man, this is a trap. That sucks. That sucks big time. And I also love the back and forth uh, between our trio when they're like, I should get cured first. It's like, no, I should get cured first. It's like... You know, like, well, Tilda's like, yeah, I'm the one that's kind of in the most pain. Um, and then Abby's like, well, she's got her um, Oxford interview coming up again. But then it was like, a, oh, but you're going on tour. Well, you just want to, like, go to your Oxford interview. And it's like, Juan is like, yeah, I think she, my girlfriend's super into, like, the whole, like, beast side of myself. And that's kind of weird. And it's just like, and, then they're, and they're just like, oh, Chufi, what a cute guy. It's like, cool, cool, cool. That's not... That's not going to go away. That's that's super cemented now. Um, and I love she tried to tell that... Uh, was it... Uh, Abby tried to tell the uh, joke she told at her interview. We don't even... I mean, even if she told the full joke, we only get the punchline to it. But I think that's what makes it makes you as the audience feel like, oh, it doesn't land because you don't know the full joke. But it's like apparently even knowing the full joke... You, but I still... I, as a sci not a science person, I probably wouldn't have gotten the joke either way, even with full context. And they're like, oh, we get it. And she's like, oh, it killed with the Oxford interview. They're like, you mean the same people that were affected with your pheromones? She's like, she's like, oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. She's like, oh, God. And they're probably only giving me this second chance out of obligation. You know, it's not because, like, oh, even if I got did the whole thing over Zoom, I'd still fail. So... But I love the whole thing of Tilda being like, don't worry, you could get cured after, you know, second. And Juan's like, I thought I was getting cured second. Juan, don't be selfish. Uh, Abby needs to get cured second, you know. Uh, but they meet our, their scientists and one by one end up getting knocked out. Luckily, um, Abby knew something was up 
Because it's like, wait, you knew about this uh, synthetic stem cell? She's like, I never told Maxwell about that. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He talked to, because also like him picking up the phone and be like, oh yeah, Sarkov just texted. I'm like, he just happens to tell us when you check your phone and just happen to be like, oh, like, you know, and you just put your phone back down. It's like, yeah, something's immediately fishy. Uh, and poor Juan, he was just about ready to go like, okay, so this is what my, sugar coal, this is what it's about. It's all about, it started, my brother Alejandro, it's all his fault, and then immediately gets drunk. I was like, well, that's, that sucks. And um, Abby could have gotten out of there because she had uh, one of them immediately, like, um, dose herself. But then... She came back for the others and got knocked out. So they were a lot more prepared for Abby. And um, that main guy, what's his name, Nate? He was the biggest dick of them all. It seems like, I mean, I think they all played their role in this, but him in particular, he was the ringleader of this. We found out that the real Maxwell is dead. He turned into like a fish person and they were running experiments on him. I'm like, why would the fuck? Because I was like, because I brought this up previously. I thought Isabel was going to be like, oh, she's hunting like all the experiments or something like that. Once again, because of, you know, whatever Sydney's circumstances are, I think she's actually the one hunting. We'll find out whether that ends up being the case. But I ended up being like, oh, are these guys going to be the hunters? The factors are like, are they hunting the creatures? Do they think they're abominations? It's like, no, they want to basically experiment on them, find out all they can about the synthetic uh, stem cells and t rip all that science out and make a whole bunch. They're going to sell it to a company named, known as Flux. So it's like, okay, so they're going to be the whole like shady science organization that's going to try and track you down and experiment on you, even though you've been experimented already by a, a mad scientist. So it seems like that's going to be the lane of uh, where things kind of go from there. But Yeah, this trio and just what they did to everyone, especially like Nate, like how sadistic he was when it came to the whole um, uh, Tilda thing. I'm curious if she had more practice with her powers, could she have like gotten through those chains or not? Probably not. It probably would have been hard to like, because it's like she can move stuff and like shatter glass, sure. But I mean, maybe if she really pushed herself and had better control, maybe she could have like broken through the chain. I don't know how powerful her screams can get. I mean, she could probably like pop someone's head if she wanted to, but she hasn't really, the circumstances that haven't come up. Thought she would have done it to Nate, but she didn't. I'm kind of glad she was the one that kind of got the like like big blow to Nate after what he was kind of putting her through like he was digging in her ears to pull something out. I don't know if that was him taking pieces of her eardrum or like what he was like taking out of her ear to get samples of he wanted blood samples but I guess because of her circumstances because of her heightened hearing like maybe it did something to like her eardrums and it's like right take off pieces of that and he was like oh don't be such a baby it's like shut you, you sadistic bastard the others didn't seem as sadistic, but I mean, granted, they are just as sadistic, but he's the one that really seemed like he leaned into it the most. Um, poor Juan was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm a, I'm going to like, okay, I'm going to show you. And it's just like when the time comes, it's like, come on, guy, don't, don't be a coward. Come on, come out. And he gets like freaking zapped for it. It's like, um, un unintentionally, Abby ended up killing uh, her captor. By, and it's like, right, um, she's like, but I can't live without you. It's like, well, if that's the case, maybe you shouldn't. And she proceeded to slice her throat. It's like, well, they're not good people. So you're, you're not feeling too bad about them kind of getting God. Because um, if it, if they, even if you had let them live, they would have tried to track down the other people. Because this all started because one of them worked in like a medical thing or something. And Maxwell came in and it's like, oh, I had gills. And so they experimented on him and their experiments led to him transforming even more into a fish person. So I was like, poor guy. They never even got a chance to meet the real Maxwell. So, and, um, but I do love, and I think it's so poetic that, um, Juan ended up well, because he made the promise, he's like, oh, like, I'm go I'm a chupacabra, and I'm going to end up ripping out your throat. Uh, but uh, Kumara, uh, she's played by an actress, because I was like, she looks so familiar. It's like, is that who I think it is? It's like, yes. Um, I'm probably going to butcher this, but um, Luriza Tronco. Uh, I was like, isn't that, uh, isn't, wasn't she from The Order? Uh, her character's name was 
uh, Gabrielle. And I was like, yeah, it totally was her. I was like, that's crazy. And the reason why I think it's so even the interesting casting there, the fact is, one, a chupacabra ended up killing her, ripping her throat out. If you never saw the order, there are werewolves in it. So I was like, oh, and she was on opposite sides of the werewolves. So it was almost like super poetic to some extent that her character ended up getting killed by... Uh, Juan, but Juan ended up getting shot in the process, he ended up taking off. And I thought it was interesting, because they did seem like they are kind of setting up the whole, like, Juan and, um, Tilda thing, because it's like, well, she has a very complicated relationship with PJ, it's like, cool, I mean, I, you know, I had sex with you, because it's like, yeah, I wanted to, but also I needed to, like, jack your keys for your van. Um, it's also like, right, you guys are going to go on tour. Like, you think typically if like your singer isn't doing okay, that you just kind of take that time to like call off your shows. But it's like, right, we don't really want to do this, but we're trying to make the best of the situation. So it's not like Rose is all gun ho about it either. But I'm like, I think she's probably a little more gun ho than you're kind of presenting. But still, I think that's kind of pushing them closer together, especially when Juan's like, oh, cool. Uh, it's interesting timing, too, because of She-Hulk, where it seems like, yeah, there's a little bit of an element of She-Hulk being fetishized to a little bit, and Juan's kind of like that in his relationship to some extent. But you could already tell, like, there is some part of him that, like, he's always kind of had a thing for Tilda. He keeps, like, denying. He's like, no, we weren't flirting. She's like, yeah, I'm not to younger guys. You can tell Juan's kind of like, oh, okay, kind of hurt by that. Uh, but then, like, later on, Tilda's like, yeah, but he's on his own. He's like, just a kid. She's like, he's not a kid. He's a young man, and it's like... The fact is, Tilda still sees him that way. Maybe that's why she can't see him as anything more. Probably might change over the course of the series, but the fact is, she didn't want to... Because she had actually heard what... Um, she heard uh, Abby find the door when she was first escaping, but she couldn't leave the others behind. She, she was like, oh, I'm just... She's like, tell, tell yourself that you're going to get find help, but she just didn't want to leave them behind. And even Tilda's like, I don't think I could have found the strength in myself to do that, like, to come back for you guys, you know? Kind of, she's like, oh, you're kind of a, you know, uh, it takes a lot to do what you did and come back for us. So it's like, right, we got this research from them. Let's go back and, um, let's go back and uh, give this to Sydney. And then there's the whole situation of, uh, now, um, Juan has killed two people. Um, well, to be fair, it's kind of. Well, I guess it's still technically two, but because it's like, well, Doug did kill himself in the end, so there's that. But there's also the fact is that um, Juan um, ends up like stumbling across someone's backyard and a little girl sees him. So hopefully it isn't a thing of, oh, he's stuck in his form and she decides to make him a pet type of thing. We'll see how that plays out. But we also got our uh, ending where a guy, which you can only assume he's from Flux, uh, I think he even said his name at the end of the episode, but he ends up showing up and finding the bodies, except for Nate. You see, like, Nate's shirt, because, like, when uh, Tilda blasted, he fell into some glass and stabbed him in the back, and it seemed like he died. Once again, I was kind of hoping she'd make his head pop, but um, she hasn't, I think, hasn't really gotten to that point yet, but I think she eventually can, a la, um, I mean, on the, on the conversations of Banshees, you can, you know, make the... Uh, example to Black Canary. I guess that would probably be like, probably is more, well, the Black Canaries don't typically have the enhanced hearing, just like the voice, very Banshee-like, but still. Um, I'm surprised I didn't think about that immediately, but thinking about him pop popping, because I actually kind of was wondering if that'd be how she ended up killing Doug, because, um, spoilers, there's someone in Arrow that had like a enhanced healing factor, I'll go ahead and talk about it, Vigilante, when, um, Laurel, Earth 2 Laurel ended up killing Black Siren, I think was her name, uh, her, like, pseudonym. Um, when she ended up killing Vigilante, I was kind of, I, I thought about last episode, but, but I forgot to talk about it. I thought that might be how um, Tilda ends up killing Doug or something like that, just kind of in a similar way. Um, but he would have survived it either way because of his healing factor, because it's even stronger than Vigilante's. Uh, either way, once again, tangents aside, but the, I think Nate might have already been experimenting on himself. I think because the others are like, oh, because uh, what uh, um, Kamara was the one being like, no, we should just go ahead, give them the flux, do whatever. But the um, 
the other girl was like, no, 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 we don't, we don't have to, like, the more we learn about them, yeah, like, it would benefit us in the long run, and to be able to sell more to Flux and make even more money, I think Nate might have already been experimenting on himself, that's why he was probably pushing the science some more, because he wanted to kind of get superpowers himself, and so he was probably testing it on himself, like, maybe that's why, because his body's the only one that was missing, so either, either it's like, one, he managed to survive, he just played dead just so they wouldn't kill him kill him or maybe he did kind of pass off a cane to life afterwards or it's just because like he experimented with the uh the synthetic stem cells on himself and it like was developing powers and they only like manifest it now maybe maybe not we'll ultimately have to wait and see uh what ends up but it's like yeah nate's kind of out there and so he's going to resurface at some point in time and that's going to be a big issue i think but it's definitely going to be interesting to see where um, the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.